Hello, and welcome to the next part of the this Dishonored 2 Let's Play. Um, last time we finished up, we made it to the mansion and we were talking to Kieran. Can't remember his name again. And we uh, finished up fighting two of his uh, mechanical soldiers um, and died a few times fighting them um, so we're going to pick up there again we're going to try and make our way through his house uh, in this playthrough Okay, let's just jump into it. want to try and break the wood ah. need to pay attention to my health let's go again so we need to try and break the wood off them and then we can get rid of their uh, arms um, if we can get behind them, we can get that. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So this is going super well so far. Hello, Clara. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Just started, already died twice. Hey, popular Jamie. Somehow I got out of that alive. 
Okay, so we gotta pull this lever and fight the one down below. This one has four arms. No long, there is no longer any doubt that the recently unseated Empress Emily Caldwin is responsible for the recent string of horrible murders. The former monarch is on the run, confirming our suspicions about her guilt and association with the Crown Killer. Indeed, some have even suggested that Emily herself committed the appalling crimes. As it is well known, she was raised by conspirators and murderers. The Grand Sir Conan Guard has promised rewards for any information leading to an arrest and warns the fugitive will be shot on sight if spotted. Duke Abel recently stated that the former Empress will likely receive a fair trial if she turns herself in peacefully and forthwith. <clears throat> Instructions to staff, to my privileged staff today, Mr. Hedros and Miss Vivian will be visiting to purchase a pair of clockwork soldiers. My instructions are as follows. The arc pylon should be stowed beneath the floor. Let's not vaporize our guests. Bring it back up only when, only in the event of a disturbance. Lay out refreshments and prepare dinner for after the contracts have been signed. If they grow restless and demand to see me, tell them that I will be with them shortly and escort them to the waiting room. Do not activate the mechanism that lowers the waiting room into the assessment chamber. I will do that once I arrive. I think she's coming down here. I'm gonna have to hide. Uh, to all personnel. Okay, so it's the same notes, is it? Yeah. Small panel on each clockwork that can be rewired, which will invert the perception of friend and foe. 
Haven't found that yet. Not that I've looked particularly hard or anything. take on things. Shoot it in the head.
satisfaction without certainty. The machine is experiencing uncertainty. Oh! Someone behind me? Two bolts takes off the head. Let's try that. Take a look around here. somewhere.
easy. Thanks for joining. I suppose I could have avoided all of that by going through here. Choose chaos. Yeah. Mm, pool. Probably something in the dining room worth getting, right? Bring up the heart and take a look around. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anything in there. The dining room is there, is it? Uh, bone charm. And somebody? Is that a guard? guests that he was talking about in his note. Blueprint. Last words. To whoever might find this, are you trapped 
I know only too well your situation. You see, these are my last words. I have found a spot away from the clutches of those things, but for what? I have no food, no water, and now I grow weak. If there was a chance of escape, then I have missed it. Even writing this note saps any strength I had left. I thought I could beat this corruption, this terrible house, this thing that Jindosh has built. But it has beaten me. If only I had thought to bring water or a morsel of bread. And so I say goodbye to you, my reckless friend. Perhaps you will die here. Perhaps you too will die here. I'm sorry for that. If I become a ghost, then I will try to help you. Otherwise, fare thee well. Stanislaw Shepherd, juggler, magician, thief, braggart, and surely a fool. Uh -huh. What does that disable? Just go in and fight. Yep, yeah, let's go for it. You ready? Suckle of that way. Okay, so we can jump onto that. Can we break this, do you think? The 
silver spike, Empress Delilah's secret. Today, risking my very life, I bring you probing questions about our new Empress Delilah Caldwin, or depending on your political leanings, the political leanings, Delilah Copperspoon. Is it true that her mother was a kitchen maid employed in Dunwall Tower? Even if so, that does not prove she was Emperor. You, I horn. Caldwin's daughter. If the Emperor did in fact have a second secret daughter making her the true heir to the Caldwin throne, why didn't he make the proper arrangements? Outside speculation. What else do we know about our Empress Delilah? What can the Silver Spike tell you beyond marketplace gossip? We can date her past from the time she claims to have grown up in Jessamine's shadow. We know when Delilah's most regarded paintings were brought, bought and sold. But where was she between those earlier times and this year when she ascended the throne in Dunwall? Such a long gap away is suspicious, is it not? No artwork sold, not even an address of record. No neighbours stepping forward with juicy tales from the long period before she arrived in Karnaka. Just three years ago, therein lies a mystery worth cracking, dear readers. Her activities in the time before she was first seen with our dear Duke Duca Abel. So when did she test Clodagh? Two days ago? That's pretty good. going in, do you think? Conditioning Sokolov. So the high and mighty Antov, Anton Sokolov won't deign to aid me in my effort to make a new version of the clockwork soldier. Fine, I have another solution. My electroshock machine, long a side project of little practical use, will be just the thing. If I can find the right calibration, I should be able to damage those parts of Sokolov's mind related to independence of free will, leaving intact his vast knowledge and hopefully an even more important quality the old man possesses, though it pains me to admit his legendary creativity. Mm. Jindosh. 
Yep, seems like that's where he is. Incendiary. Very useless. stopping it, I just have to kill it. That is just the override. Is it the same on all of them? Die. 
No, it's unconscious. Okay. Note to Anton Sokolov. My dear Anton, I hope the sound of the clockwork soldier outside your cell doesn't disturb your rest. I find the solid footfalls and gentle electric hum to be soothing. But you may be of a different opinion. In fact, in your condition, the noise might be maddening. Especially since the pressure plate for the exit to your cell is positioned tangentially within reach. But should you attempt to venture forth from the assessment chamber like some wrinkled grey whiskered rat hunting through a labyrinth for a morsel of cheese, you will soon find your stoic guardian bearing down on you. You're an intelligent man, I'm sure. I don't need to illustrate what those honed edges would do to your ancient, ancient and haggard body, Kieran Jindosh. Okay. So we carry him out. Sokolov back to the carriage before confronting Jindosh. was I waiting for? Who knows? Guest area private. Once we drop him off, uh. I won't let you take him. Sokolov was the great thinker of his time, and now. All right.
Oi. Okay. Add a health potions. Yes, he ran away. And then 
incendiary bolt. Let's see. <clears throat> to do that before you attack. See what do you say? just disappear. safe. Was there a black market in there?
Yeah, maybe not. Letter to Amado Foundry. Please type and send this letter to Nora Amado Foundry. Madam, your idiot foreman just quer quer what? queried me thusly. Will any size do? Any size, he says. No, no, no. The components must be precisely the size specified in my plans. I need assurances that there is someone at your facility who understands this. Who will see to it personally that all the parts I've requested will be perfectly uniform, exactly sized, and composed of the requested materials. I will not pay a single coin until I have confirm confirmation my requirements will be met. These parts are not just paperweights for my desk. They must fit together within a large machine after they leave your doors. I will replate, I await your reply. K. Jindosh. Else. Good. Uh, how many do I actually have? Find the electroshock machine. Okay.
Scratch, you're so passionate about regaining your throne. By all accounts, you were quite rubbish as an emperor. Um, the rats did equal bodies in the first one. I think they do in this one. so sure about this one. I think the blood flies represent bodies in this one. Maybe the rats do as well. Survived, so better than it did last time. I think the rats mean that you've killed lots of people. I think that's what it said in your first stream. Maybe. Uh, I know they definitely did. I know. Blood flies increase as bodies increase because they use the bodies to gestate. So the more bodies there are, the more blood flies there are. Um, I don't need any of that. But rats could still be a thing as well.
So did the dot do anything? I don't know. Maybe I need the rewire tool. Conditioning Sokolov. My effort to fine tune the electroshock machine have been less than successful, breaking down the more bothersome elements of a subject's personality, such as willpower, while leaving cognition and creativity unharmed, has proven unrealistic. Instead, my machine leaves the subject babbling like a child, which is the opposite of what I need for Sokolov. Got a lot of cameras around here. resistant to the notion of collaborating than anticipated. He's a stubborn old goat. A stubborn old goat, which could be his undoing unless I'm careful with the electroshock machine. My goal is to render Sokolov pliable, but still capable of assisting me in designing a new version of the Clockwork Soldier. At the moment, each clockwork costs a fortune, but I'm certain my old teacher and I can find a way to reduce the costs. A colleague of mine owns a stunning map of the known world, adorned with... Uh, yes, we've read this one. Ah, I see. 
see where we are now. I don't know why I picked that up. Uh, Baker's and Electroshock. My Electroshock machine provides insight into the human mind, though admittedly, admittedly the subject is damaged or destroyed in the process. The advancement of knowledge is usually worth the sacrifice, of course. Once having tested it on a baker, I found that I could obliterate the memories of his life and thus his personality, while not impeding his ability to bake bread. I thought it odd at the time, but it's this exact effect I wish to reproduce on Sokolov. Sadly, I've never been able to reproduce it in, to my satisfaction. Sokolov, however, is no mere baker. If he refuses to aid me, it's doubtful that the machine could be used to weaken his willpower without also obliterating the knowledge and capabilities that are so precious to me. Still, the thought of reducing Sokolov to a state of infantile stupor is satisfying. Finished letter on legacy. Honestly, I bear no ill will towards Emily Caldwin or her father, the royal protector. I've never given a single fig for any of those palace born nobles in Dunwall, so how could I think ill of one empress or another? You would not be incorrect in suggesting that my motivations for assisting the Duke were at least twofold. I wanted to advance the causes of natural philosophy for the sake of the work itself, and to show those stodgy morons at the academy the light they very nearly extinguished. Further, of course, I am no stranger to infamy, and in fact I am fond of it, but there's more driving the engines of my desire. Dynasties rise and fall with the ages through mundane catalysts such as famine, plague, or bankruptcy. Now, however, we live in a time that is being shaped by genius, just as Roseboro, Sokolov, Joplin, and Hypatia have set the wheels of history spinning with their contributions, so will Kieran Jindosh. And it is my goal to eclipse those who came before me, no matter how the history books record the tale regarding this turn in power. It must be stated that it was only possible through advances in industry and technological exploration. Power now rests in the hands of the brilliant, and the world will never be the same. How is Puka, Clara? Uh, are you going to zap him? Is uh, zap him? I'm gonna knock him out. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll zap him. Why not? Seems like an ass. Okay, uh, so this is the lab. Clockwork soldiers, 
Probably no way of bringing that one from the bedroom over. He's shooting me. Come on. I only had that one, which I used. This one's gone. Where's this one gone? Uh, 
Um. I suppose it could have. I guess we lost that friend. Assuming they came back, yeah. Back 
back indicates lost enemy. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Take out the heads. Makes it a bit easier. Now with this guy, we block him. Sokolov, I tire of dealing with my old teacher. I'm confident that I don't need him to simplify the design of Clockwork Soldier, but without Sokolov, it could take years to reduce the cost of each clockwork to a design. Uh, to, excuse me, to design a version that could be built with cheaper, more readily available materials, and assembled by Duke Bell's half-witted factory workers. The Duke will get his Clockwork Army. I'll make sure of that. The question is when. I'll keep experimenting with the electroshock machine, trying to get it just right, and if Sokolov can be made to help me, I'll continue using the machine on him anyway as entertainment. Note to Kieran Jindosh. Kieran, it is, it's my hope that the pale stars look down with favour upon your attempts to gain Sokolov's favour. But if the old goat will not bend to your will, I can offer an alternative to merely keeping him locked in your assessment chamber and subjecting him to cruel electrotherapy. I've started a new effigy cast in Sokolov's shape. Given time, I believe it might grant me some influence over your esteemed guest, Brianna. Machine Jindosh mentioned. Ah, 
<laughs> Note to self, there is insufficient power to operate the electroshock machine until this is re rectified. I'll have to compensate freeing up more power for the electroshock machine by configuring the other lab laboratory platforms so they draw the least power. The other lab machines are draining away too much electricity. What do you think? Should I go for it or leave them? Uh, Woodcraft, maybe. Shock him or just leave him. Okay, so shocking is the non lethal option. configuration current power needs anatomy okay Just those two, maybe. Shock machine should work now. No, no, no! You don't know what you're doing! Anything! I'll 
give you anything you want. Stop! Don't do this! So much will be lost in age of advancement! Dosh entry on whalebone. Today I'll raise the anatomy platform, bringing it up to the laboratory floor where I can resume my work on evaluating the ruined artifact. Even as a man dedicated to natural philosophy, I must admit that my association with the occultist Brianna Ashworth has renewed my interest in the study of whalebone. Given what I've seen over the past three years working with Brianna, I cannot entirely dispel the idea that the bones of the Leviathans possess unusual properties. When pressed, she speaks in the meaningless palaver of the spiritualist. In an attempt to find answers on my own, I have procured one of the so-called rune artifacts, considered heretical, of course, by the narrow minds of the Abbey. However, thus far, my examinations have netted nothing of interest. A sample of human tissue affected by these runes might reveal more, were I able to get, say, the jawbone of one of those poor sods burned alive by the overseers. of an asshole is he might be that is a very cruel non-lethal thing to do Our way back. Upper, lower.
Ooh. Struggling a bit there. Who are they? The voice sounded a bit strange. Likely just attack. I don't know if there's any story there. Um. Let's see, we can put him down and see what happens if I go over to them. I suspect they will just attack. Let's put you down there. Witches. What? Time of your demise is at hand. <coughs> Witches. Uh. Hmm. They mess up the game. Anyway. <laughs> I hope you kissed your kids goodbye this morning. The game does not like them being around. 
Okay, witches. So they... Uh, I don't think I'm ready to take on yet. So let's avoid them as we were doing. Pretty sure we're human. Um, Let's go then. I'm gonna ignore those witches for now. I don't think we can do anything with them. I also did not know that they were witches. I don't remember if there was in the first one. Very much on the assault and lethal side there. Uh, uh, most things are bone charms. Uh, this is a vent station, rob the ticket booth. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. I barely remember the DLC. Something was off. The void, but somehow different this time. Surprised I can pull you into this place. The outside mm -hmm. of the world. You flee your precious tower and turned your father into cold stone. How difficult for you. But when I was young, the sweet Jessamine and I were closer sisters, sharing a secret. Emperor Coldwin had another daughter born in shame to a kitchen maid. Am I dreaming? If not, how is Delilah doing this? Hmm.
Sokolov is safe. I rescued Sokolov, the man spent years ser serving my family, educating me in both intellectual subjects and bro body humour. 
and now a small part of what I owe him has been repaid. I'm just sorry I can't offer him more comfortable accommodations. The dreadful whale, dank and cramped as it is, is our home for now. He's been living here with Megan for years, but in his current condition, I wish we could make him more comfortable. I was able to stop Kieran Jindosh. His weaponized mind won't be a threat now. His thoughts scattered and his memories destroyed by his own device, no less. When Sokolov is feeling better, maybe he'll have an opinion on whether I did the right thing or not by killing Jindosh outright. Uh... <coughs> By not killing Jindosh outright. Anyway, it's a relief to know the last clockwork soldiers remaining in the Empire are the only ones there will ever be. Delilah in the void. I dreamt of Delilah Copper Spoon. No, this was more than a dream. I was in the void. Somehow Delilah brought me there. I don't know if she was showing me the true past or a fabrication. She spoke of my grandfather, Emperor Emperor Ewhorn. Jacob Caldwin. History says he was a man of honour who served his people, but Delilah showed me all his promises unfulfilled, all those easy lies. She showed me my mother, Jessamine, as I never imagined her, spoiled and petty, entitled, and finally a great injustice, Delilah's mother dying in a debtor's prison. I have so many questions, but how do I sort the truth from the lies? Thank you. It's something I should say to your face, but that's hard for me. Thank you for what you did, bringing Anton back. What would I have done without him puttering around the ship, bumbling and stroking his greasy beard? I wanted to find him on my own, but hearing what you went through, I'm, I'm impressed. Anyway, enjoy this bottle from the captain's reserve. Good stuff. I got from an aristocrat wanting quick passage out of Karnaka a while back. You'll need it now that Anton is back, if you want to slip if you want to sleep. His snoring cuts straight through the bulkhead. Good night, Claudia. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm probably gonna finish up now as well. So, yeah, we'll finish up and pick up from there next time. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, it was fun dealing with those clockwork soldiers. Wait, did I say that? Yeah. Alright, good night, and see you next time.